Good morning, Stitchy people, or good afternoon, actually. It's a little bit afternoon as I'm filming this on Saturday, May 16th. Um, so hi, hello, um, welcome to the channel. I'm Jessie, this is Miss Lead Pages. And uh, for those of you who are new here, and there are several of you, thank you very much. Uh, welcome to the channel, and uh, this is the place where I talk about all of my cross-stitchy goodness. So I talk about the projects that I'm working on, the projects that I plan to work on. Um, I show some of the purchases that I've made, as well as um, a little bit of happy mail and um, all that kind of stuff. Usually at the end there's also a bit of yarny goodness uh, where I talk about knitting projects that I'm working on. I may actually separate that out this time because I don't want this video to be too long um, and I know that I have a lot of yarn stuff to talk about so I may actually start doing separate shows for those. So keep an eye out. I'll let you know at the end of the show well, what I decide to do, because basically we're flying by the seat of our pants here. So um, it is May, we're about halfway through May. And um, let's see, in my last video, I, I did a little bit of a um, real time 24 hours of cross stitch bit for you. Um, I didn't quite get to do everything that I had wanted to do with that video. I'll talk more about that here in a second. And um, let's see, let's start with some happy mail. That's what I, or actually, back up a little bit. Let's start with what am I listening to? So um, still not listening to audiobooks, still not doing a great job with that, but <laughs> I've been catching up on a lot of Netflix. <laughs> So um, let's see, in addition to finishing Santa Clarita Diet, which I think I may have done uh, before the last time we, or by the last time we had chatted, I've been watching some Criminal Minds, um, and I've recently started catching up on all the CW superhero shows because my husband is desperate to watch Crisis on Infinite Earths, um, which is a crossover event that they had earlier this season, um, and I started to watch that and got really confused because I hadn't caught up with the storylines, so now I'm going back. So in order to catch up on all of that and be ready for Crisis on Infinite Earths, I've had to catch up on Supergirl, I've had to catch up on The Flash, I've had to catch up on Legends of Tomorrow, and I am finally now to Arrow. Once I catch up on Arrow, we can finally watch Crisis on Infinite Earths. Technically speaking, I should watch all of Batwoman up until that point as well, but I'm not patient enough to do that, and her story is not really well-defined enough uh, for it to matter that awfully much based on what I've seen so far. So um, I've been watching lots of superheroes, um, and I will say Arrow is the most difficult one to to binge and to, to mainline because you can't really watch it and know what's going on while doing other stuff, which is what I've been doing with the other shows. I've just had it on while I'm working, or I've had it on while I'm crafting or whatever, it's totally fine but I can't do that with Arrow. I've gone through like 15 episodes so far and I'm finding that I'm only really halfway catching what's happening. So it is what it is. Um, I've at least gotten to the point where I understand why a couple of things have happened. So when we get to Crisis on Infinite Earths, I'll be a little bit more grounded there. So we'll see how that goes. And uh, I'm gonna apologize now for the lighting. I'm not sure what's happening with my camera. Um, the light outside is changing a little bit, but I see that it's going yellow and white and all kinds of craziness. So I'm not sure, maybe if I lean back a little bit, it's better. Um, yeah, so that's going to be a thing. Um, I think I mentioned uh, last time that I've changed light bulbs. Maybe I didn't mention to you guys. Anyway, I have a, an overhead light here um, that has those teeny tiny little chandelier bulbs and they started going bad. They were regular incandescent, so I've replaced them with LEDs, and the LED light is very different than the incandescent. The incandescent was warm yellow. This is a cold blue. Um, it's supposed to be daylight, so it's supposed to be better to see by. Um, I do find that it's, it's causing some issues with my camera, so fair warning. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm listening to. Um, I will be starting a rewatch of House very soon, and I'll talk more about that in a little bit. Um, so that's what I'm listening to, and now let's talk about Happy Mail. So, requisite Happy Mail I got, let's see, uh, my Zenspire Design stickers, which I will say I'm not as crazy about them this month as I was last month, but they're so cool. So I got this little hand, yay, and skateboard. And just to remind you folks, Zen, Zenspire Designs is somebody I found on Instagram, um, and it's hard to see without me refocusing the camera. Let me mess this up a little bit. 
Okay. So you might, you can probably see better now. She actually does these really fantastic um, intricate designs and then she colors them in and prints them and makes them into stickers. Um, and it's super, super fun. Let me put the skateboard back up there because this one's actually really cool. So lots of really interesting sort of tribal designs. Um, I love her aesthetic um, and her colors and all that sort of stuff. So these are really, really fun. And you can actually see even better in this one. And this one, well, if you could see it, you could see better that she's got some, um, some really intricate things going on there. So I found her on Instagram and um, learned that she has a Patreon. Let me refocus the camera. One of these days, I'm going to get a self-focusing camera <laughs> so I don't have to do all that. Um, so yeah, so she does these um, fantastic designs. She has a Patreon. So I joined her um, lowest level sticker club. So I get those nice little stickers every month. And um, this past month, and it's taking her a little while to get production down, uh, but this past month she started offering face masks and so the front of the face mask is a black and white design that she has made herself um, and that's where the production issues are coming in because she's having that fabric custom made and she's still waiting on it um, so the front of the mask will be her design and then it's reversible and it'll have a solid color on the back um, and I've ordered a couple of those but they have not arrived yet it feels like it's been ages since I ordered it but realistically it's been a week and a half it's just quarantine time, you know. So those are on the way. I'm excited to show those to you. I think they're super cute. Um, additionally, I just got my <clears throat> Latest Kate Patreon subscription. And you all know I love the Latest Kate. She's fantastic and inspirational. And let's see what she sent. I haven't actually opened this all the way, so let's see what she sent this month. I think I'm at the $10 tier with her, so I get two um, prints as well as an extra little freebie every month. And right now she's doing um, magnets. So this month's, um, it says, you may feel pretty weak, but your rate of survival is 100% and it's got a tardigrade. Super cute. I like that. I hadn't even seen that one online yet. So, um, and then this one is um, a ladybug. It says, hey, you don't need to face tomorrow or next week or next year right now. Just get yourself, just get yourself what you need today. Very good advice. Can you see that without the glare? The sweet little ladybug. And then this one, I don't know how to pronounce this creature. It's an axolotl. Exil, Exil, if y'all know how to pronounce it. It's a cute little, like, weird creature. It's okay to be whatever weirdo you are today. Yeah, that's pretty good. So, love those. Always love the latest Kate. Um, and I love getting these little, these little prints every month. I think, um, at some point, I'm actually going to laminate these and start hanging them up once I finally get my craft room together. Um, in a way where I can hang things. Oh my gosh, this is not working. I don't know why I'm insisting on struggling. A lot of it is I don't really want to edit. So I apologize in advance because uh, editing is annoying. <laughs> I usually do edit a lot more than I act like I'm going to, but I'm, I'm really not feeling it this weekend. So we'll see how that goes. I'm trying to fit this in between several other things. So, you know, um, and lastly, but most importantly, in Happy Mail. So earlier this week, I got this package. And those of you who follow Rachel Ray, you may know that um, in for a lot of different things, she'll have stuff shipped to me. She'll purchase it in America, have it shipped to me, and then I kind of put it all together and send her one big happy package um, every once in a while. So if you're familiar with her, you're familiar with that setup. She mentions it several times. So I got a package that I was pretty sure was hers, but it was actually addressed to me. And see, the way she sets this up, she always has it addressed to her. So I know what's hers, I know what's mine, it's all good. Um, but it was addressed to me and I'm like, but I didn't, I didn't buy this. Because it was um, background, Michelle Bendy Stitchy does charity auctions. She's just restarted them recently. And there was this, this lot that I had bid on, um, but I knew I hadn't won it. I knew that somebody else had bid on it and I hadn't paid attention to it after that. So I knew that I had not won it, but it showed up in my mail. 
And I'm like, where did this come from? So I messaged Rachel and she's like, happy early birthday. And I was like, oh my God, it was the best day ever. So this fantasticness as I cover my mouth so you can't hear me this fantasticness was a charity auction um, that Michelle Bendy Stitchy put on her Instagram and I thought it was super cute it's got this really neat pattern that I'll show you here in a second um, and I bid on it but I was like you know I just didn't I didn't fight for it I bid on it and I wanted it but I didn't fight for it and then the next thing I know it's showing up in my mail and I'm like what what yeah, so this was the best, happiest surprise um, that I could get, I think. So um, I was just so excited and so happy. And so this is actually a card from Michelle herself, which is super special. And it's basically just her telling me that, that Rachel asked her to send this to me. And it was fantastic. Such, such a fantastic happy birthday surprise. Um, but the actual kit came with... Um, this mint tea and i have to tell y'all mint is my favorite kind of tea i didn't even know it came with this mint tea but it's fantastic um it's got all these little buttons for finishing and we've got some uh, floss keeps as i hold it sideways let me hold it sideways so you can really see it's got some floss keeps in there as long as well as a ring um so that's really cool little add-ons there it also came with some finishing fabrics and some finishing um lace trim and some different things or actually I think this is nope this is not finishing fabric I don't know what I'm looking at this is actually this is a scissor uh, sleeve super cute it's got that little button there to hold it together and this is a floss keep oh my gosh I hadn't even opened it. <laughs> I hadn't even opened it completely. It's a floss keep, but it's got some stitch keepers and some needles and um, and some buttons and a safety pin. So yeah, I should have opened this completely. I didn't. <laughs> so it has even more surprises than I knew were in here. How fantastic is that? So yeah, it is super super sweet. Um, but yeah, so that's a floss keep. It's just a little folder that will keep your little bits of floss they'll kind of stick to this fabric it's not real fuzzy but it's got enough tack to it that um, floss will just kind of stay there so you can all your little odd bits that you're working on with a with a work in progress you can kind of stick it there how cute is that oh my gosh so yeah so it's not just finishing fabric it is it's actual little items coordinated items so cute this is finishing <laughs> so there's some there's some trim a couple of different kinds of trim here which is really cute but yeah oh my gosh i love these i love these um stitch keepers look at those or actually i guess they could be froggers no they've got they're pointy yeah so those are probably stitch keepers super cute oh my gosh so yeah very very exciting and um one of the in addition to the fact that i just loved this um i haven't had a real project bag yet like one one of these that has the clear front pocket to keep your work safe i haven't had one of those yet so that was one of the the biggest reasons for wanting this a lot but the other was this pattern which i thought was super sweet william and mary torn were married in march in the year of our god so um probably like the words themselves are not necessarily what i would stitch but i just thought the pattern was super cute and if i wanted to i could certainly stitch this for somebody's wedding or i could change it and make the words really snarky <laughs> which i think would be really funny <laughs> but i just loved that pattern i loved the um the uh, project bag and the fact that it comes with so many you know cute little extras is just fantastic and you know to have rachel have michelle send this to me for my birthday was just just fantastic so thank you rachel i appreciate it i already told her thank you like a bazillion million times but i feel like i need to tell her like a couple more million times because this is yeah i can't get over what a wonderful surprise it was so yeah so that's my happiest of happy mail my stitchy kindness uh from rachel ray which is so fantastic. Oh my gosh. Yep. So that is happy mail for this time. So let's talk a little bit about 24 hours of cross stitch. So the main reason, let me take a sip. 
the main reason I didn't quite get in as much on that um, the previous video was because I started to feel kind of funky um, towards the end of that weekend. I was getting, I think, a sinus infection or something. Don't worry, I'm totally fine. It was not the virus that shall not be named, um, but I was I was not feeling real well. I have a lot of sinus issues, especially in the spring and um, as fall turns into winter, like those times of year. Um, and so it just kind of hit me all at once. And I was, I had a week and a half, two weeks where I was really feeling pretty awful. So I did stitch, but I wasn't feeling up to doing a whole bunch of videos and clips and things like that. And part of that may be just the fact that I started into the weekend waking up so awfully early that Friday and then trying to do eight hours of work and eight hours of stitching and yeah, so. Rule number one, or at least change number one for next 24 hours of cross stitch, is that um, if I plan on actually trying to do the full 24 hours of cross stitch, I think I will try to take that Friday off of work so that I don't have to do eight hours of work and eight hours of cross stitch. Because the best strategy, in my opinion, if you're gonna break it up over the weekend, is to do eight hours a day. It's much more manageable than trying to do 16 hours in one day or 10 hours a day or whatever. Um, folks do it, folks will stitch 24 hours straight they will not stop, they will have, they will eat, and then they will go straight back to stitching, whatever. Um, and if that's your bag, that's totally fine. I apologize if I'm shaking the camera. Um, but if that's your bag, that's totally fine. I'm, I'm not able to do those kinds of marathons anymore. <laughs> I just don't have it in me to stay up for 24 hours, let alone try to stitch. Um, and my eyesight doesn't allow me to be able to do that even with my my reading glasses and that sort of stuff so it's just it, 24 hours straight is not going to happen but eight hours a day for three days that's totally doable um it's just i need to not have to also do my day job so um so that would be the main thing i would do for next time um <clears throat> and so i'm just going to briefly show you what i worked on most of this you've already seen um, but some of it you didn't get to see like me holding it so this obviously is my winter 2019 Stitchonomy um, SAL. So that's finally finished. Um, and I had to drag it out of the finished box because honestly, as soon as I finished this, I dropped it in that box and was like, done. Don't even want to think about it. So I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know how I'm going to finish this. Um, I haven't really even thought about it. For the most part, I, what I do actually is I take my finished pieces and I drop them in a box. And then when I'm ready to think about finishing things, I pull out the box and decide what I'm going to do. So unless I have a specific idea about a finish, uh, which I haven't had in a while. So, but this is, this is finished. That is, so I got a finish out of 24 hours of cross stitch, which is awesome. You can't go wrong with a finish. Let me just move some things around, sorry. Um, and then I did get two and a half hours in on this piece. Um, I feel like it doesn't look like a whole lot happened here. Um, if I feel like editing or adding in some stuff, I'll try to do a side-by-side -side comparison of where I started before 24 hours across stitch and where I ended up. Um, for the most part, it's, um, the yellow in the moon's face here. Um, I finished up almost all of the yellow in the sun's face and I started working on some blue in the background. So that's what I did there. So I did put in two and a half hours. I feel like I probably should have worked on this a little bit more, but I did get, I did get my goal for that. I got two hours in that. Um, and then most of my time, as you probably noticed, was spent on this piece. So this is um, Stiach, the, or from this is the pattern from the Stiach along number five. Um, so this would have been 2016, I think. I think 2016 is when they did number five. Anyway, um, so this is the majority of the top part of the pattern. Um, and what this is going to ultimately say is, as for me and my house, we shall. Oh, we shall serve. Um, is what that says. As for me and my house, we shall serve. And then my plan, my original plan down here um, was to do, um, or, as for me and my house, we shall serve. And then down here, it'll say the giant head uh, from Rick and Morty. Um, that's still my plan. Um, but I'm also thinking of possibly doing a second one. So I may actually finish this one differently and then do another one that has the giant head. Part of that is because um, I'm not totally in love with these colors. And also I hate this fabric. Um, hate it with the fiery passion of hell. 
<laughs> I can't, and I can't say it any more lightly than that. And I think part of the, pro I think the reason that this fabric is so frustrating, I like 18 count Ada, I really do, and that's what this is. Um, but this is completely unwashed, un tampered with straight out of the package white Ada from the store. And because um, it's not had any washing or dyeing or anything like that, it is really, really stiff. And um, whatever sizing or whatever they used on it is actually sort of um, gluing the fibers together. So not only can you not see the different threads in the Ada, it's hard to poke through them. So um, this, has, this was actually somewhat of a nightmare. To stitch um, and it's one of those that I was just like get through it get through it get through it as much as I love the pattern and really the pattern coming through was what kept me going um, if it hadn't been for the fact that I really love this pattern I probably would have been like nope psh, out the door so anyway so I will finish this but I may go with a simpler finish on this um, this particular piece and then redo this pattern on um, a nicer piece of fabric with the giant head um, so we'll see We'll see, I might use one of my, my hand dyed pieces, my own ice dyed pieces, and do the giant head on this. There's a Bob's Burgers finish <laughs> that I really like that I might do. But either way, it's gonna be finished with either um, the giant head or Bob's Burgers. And my plan is still to finish this in 2020. So I'm a good way, a good long way towards that. So that was 24 hours of cross stitch. Um, that was all I got done. Um, total of about 16, it was like 15.59, um, 15 hours and 59 minutes. Um, so about 16 hours into those three pieces. So, um, and I'm very proud of myself for getting through 16 hours. There's a part of me that um, is sad that that's all I have to show for 16 hours of cross stitching. And that is, that is straight up stitching time. So what I did, um, I used an app called, I meant to look this up, uh, Swipe Times. I'll show it to you. So this is what, okay, you're not even going to be able to see that. I'll see if I can put in a screenshot. Um, so Swipe Times is uh, a timer app. It's really kind of used more for um, counting your working time like your billable hours and things like that but you can set up different projects and different tasks and so you can time down to like if I wanted to time um, have a setup for one particular cross stitch piece and then have separate sections of it so if I wanted to take one of my year-long SALs and I wanted to have a main project with tasks for each month I could actually time out how much time I spent on each individual month and it would aggregate up to the the full project and so on and so forth so I could I could do timers that way and this is set up so that I just I hit the button when I want to start my time uh, for whatever I'm working on and then I hit it again to to stop the time timer. If it's less than a minute, it'll automatically drop it. You can add and subtract time if you need to. But what I did was basically like, I sit down, pull out my stitching, and hit that button, and then the needle goes into the fabric. And if I stop for any reason to take a phone call, to look at my text messages, to get up and fix something to eat, I would stop the timer. So this is not just, I sat down and, and during those 16 hours I was stitching, no, that was 16 hours of hardcore stitching. So, um, I feel like I should have more to show for that. <laughs> but anyway, still, still a good job. Um, probably, I don't know if I'm going to focus on those for the next 24 hours of cross stitch or if I'm going to focus more on my SALs next time. I might do the SALs just because I'm, I'm woefully behind on all of those. Um, and I'm not even going to drag them all out to show you because I haven't worked on any of them. <laughs> so... Uh, what I have worked on, um, let's talk about some whips and then we'll get into mania. So, um, and actually whips are going to be super short because I only worked on one thing that wasn't mania so far. <laughs> so um, after 24 hours of cross stitch, I needed something different to work on. So um, I got back into this witchy stitcher and you can actually see, um, I'll try to remember to put some side by sides here too. Um, I've actually gotten a lot of work in on this. So um, in addition to finishing out these, um, these little gray pieces um, for the roof tiles, I actually put in a whole bunch of black. All of that is new. Um, I, think the, I think the window here is new too. Um, since the last time you saw this and then all of this black is new. So you can see it's actually starting to become a roof now, which is really cool. 
And this is one where it's it's really funny because I get really like, oh, I need to work on that. I need to work on that. And then I work on it for a little while and I'm like, oh, I'm done. <laughs> and a lot of it is because it's it's so much 310, like probably 90% of this design is 310. Um, the colors here that you see, this is the majority of the color for the entire piece. There are some other little accents on the outsides, um, but for the most part, this color that you already see on here is the color that's there. So um, it's still a fantastic piece. I've discovered that I'm kind of obsessed with Baba Yaga. Um, and after a friend sent me um, a pretty lengthy description of who Baba Yaga is in uh, Slavic folklore um, and why she is what she is, um, I was like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so do yourself a favor, do some research on Baba Yaga. Um, she's a Slavic folk figure. I'll give you the short version. Um, so basically she's an old witch woman who lives in the woods and she decorates her house with like the skulls and bones of children and, and other things. She makes her, she lives in this like chicken legged house out in the woods. She makes her place like really scary. And the whole idea is that she is willing to help you, but you have to be willing not only to brave the terrain to come and see her, but you have to be respectful and you have to come to her with a great need and with respect and you have to do what she asks you to do. Now, if you do that, if you come to her with respect and you ask her for something and you do her a favor and you do it as she asks you to, then she will do what you need. She will absolutely help you out. But if you screw up, or if you come to her in any kind of nasty mood or whatever, if you disrespect her at all, she will eat you dead. So. Um, and I kind of feel like I'm one of those curmudgeon -y, get off my lawn kind of ladies. So this is sort of my spirit animal. When I'm old, when I'm 80, um, I'll be living in the woods in a chicken house um, telling people to leave me alone. <laughs> so maybe that's why I love Baba Yaga so much. <laughs> or Baba Yaga. I'm not really sure what the correct pronunciation is. I've heard it both ways. So anyway. I actually, um, I just purchased today um, a new pattern, uh, Baba Yaga pattern, um, as well as a Kikimora pattern. Um, Kikimora, I don't know anything about the folklore, but she is a, um, I don't know much about the folk folklore. She's another Slavic folk figure. Um, she's a swamp witch and queen of the frogs or princess of the frogs is what I hear. So I got those two patterns. Um, <clears throat> from an Etsy shop called Stitchy Princess. Stitching Princess, Stitchy Princess. I'll try to put a link. Um, but she um, is Slavic. Um, and so these are two of her favorite characters and she has several different patterns, especially for Baba Yaga. So um, yeah, so I put in some stitches here and now that I'm looking at it again, I'm like, ooh, I need to work on this again. So, <laughs> so that'll be happening again soon. Um, now, let's talk about Mania. So, um, I don't actually know the full premise of Mania. Um, I haven't done the research. I know what I've heard from Rachel Ray and a couple other folks. I think the idea is that um, they started it many years ago, and each year they increased the number of projects you're supposed to start based on the year. So, in 2016, when they started it, I think, the idea was to start 16 new projects in May. Now that it's 2020, the idea is to start 20 new projects in May. Well, I still am probably not going to get to 20. Um, I never really intended to get to 20 or to get to 30 or whatever the idea was. Um, I, I was just going to start as many as I felt comfortable starting as I, I wanted to start. Um, so far, I have five starts. Um, I will have more starts, at least one, two, possibly three, um, if not more. Um, at least one more. More than likely more than that. <laughs> I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail just yet, <laughs> but there is a project coming up in the end of the month, so there will absolutely be one new start, um, but I'm thinking of, I have anywhere between like three and six other projects that I may actually get started in May, so we'll see. So my first new start is actually a finish, um, which I'm super happy about. Um, this pattern is from Fiddlesticks AU. Let me see if I can... I'm going to readjust the camera again because I want you to be able to see this. Okay. So this pattern, it's a free pattern from Fiddlesticks AU. Um, and at the top it says, just breathe. And then below that border it says, but not on me or near me, breathe over there. <laughs> very, very appropriate for the current time. Um, I haven't figured out how to sign it. 
because I don't want to disrupt the pattern. Um, and I started to put the my signature over here, I think, and um, I just really, it, it took too much away. So, um, so I didn't do that. Or directions, okay. I apologize if I'm making you seasick. Um, so this piece of fabric is one of my uh, scraps or from my grab bag that I got from Kathy at Dying for Cross Stitch. Um, and this piece is fantastic. So this I used, um, this is what I used for um, the Michelle Bendy Stitchy Be Well and Stitch. Um, and I obviously had enough to do this on as well. I love this fabric. It's fantastic to work with. Um, and part of it is because it's, um, this is a Lugana, it's an even weave. So it's it's pretty thick and sturdy. Um, I, I stitched this in hand and it was super easy because you just kind of roll it over as you're working on it. It holds its shape really nicely, super easy to stitch. So this went super quick. I finished this in two days and that was basically just two couple hour sessions, so fast. Um, and I also, um, let me see. I'm getting my thoughts all jumbled up. Okay, so the fabric is uh, from Kathy at Dying for Cross Stitch. The floss I use, this is actually only three different skeins. So it's only three different um, colors, technically. Excuse me. So the flowers up here and this border here are from one variegated skein from, um, actually all of this is from Hand Dyed by Rolanda, but that skein had colors ranging from a nice um, intense pink all the way to this um, sort of brown green color. So I used that colorway, excuse me, hiccups. Um, I use that colorway for the flowers and for that border. Um, most of the rest of this is stitched with um, a variegated thread that went from this sort of magenta color here all the way to this light blue um, in the in the breathe um, and that was too light for the um, the back stitch lettering here at the bottom so this is actually the darkest blue from that silk set that I got from hand dyed by Rolanda so that's the same silk set that I used for um, the be well and stitch Michelle Bendy stitchy one so um, just three different colors, even though it's a whole bunch more different colors. Um, and as far as the pattern goes, I actually changed the pattern quite a bit. Um, nothing against Fiddlesticks AU, but the way they had designed the border here, um, it was not symmetrical. And this H actually um, bled down into um, the border here some, and it didn't make visually it didn't make a lot of sense to me I'm sure they had their reasons and I know a lot of folks will design some of these patterns specifically to be asymmetrical totally fine not my bag I like symmetry <laughs> unless it's like artful asymmetry and and this to me just wasn't it wasn't jiving for me so I actually redid um, the border this first part um, about up to here um, is original to the pattern. And then what I did was I repeated this um, this little wave sort of thing and then um, reflected the first part of the pattern here to make it symmetrical. Theirs was very, very different. I also moved um, the arrow because originally they had all of this back stitching text together and then the arrow was at the very bottom. Uh, for me, this made more sense. So since it's my piece and it's my rules, I did what I wanted. <laughs> So that's a finish, fantastic, I love it. Very fun to stitch. Uh, my second finish, or my second stitch, there's something going on with this needle. This must not actually be a Bowen needle. Um, not that it matters, but if you can see, it's got some tarnishing on there, and that hasn't happened to any of my other Bowen needles, so I'm not sure, this might be an extra needle I got from somewhere else. Anyway, I'm probably gonna stop using it because it's getting, it's it's funky. Anyway, this is not a finish, but it is my second start for Mania. This is the Be Well Mini Bouquet. And this is from Jeanette Douglas Designs. This is a free Be Well pattern. You can find this on her website. I'll try to remember to link all these things. Um, and this is about, uh, a third or maybe half of the way done. Um, so there's another, uh, there's another matching flower that goes over here. And then there are two smaller flowers here. There's the, the vines and leaves in the center and a little pot. And then it will say be well at the bottom. This one too, I'm probably going to change the pattern slightly 
just because again it's not symmetrical and I need symmetry so <laughs> so I'll probably change the words only slightly just to make it a little bit more symmetrical for me uh, this again is a piece of grab bag fabric from uh, Kathy at dying for cross stitch this is an even weave again a joy to work with love it um, and these are um, let's see the border is this is actually that same color um, of hand dyed rope from Rolanda um, that I used in the last piece but this purple is from coloring cotton that was part of my April pack yeah that's part of my April pack I loved that purple I decided to use it on here so um, and this one this one and the other pattern both I went with my own colors um, so I pretty much ignored excuse me I pretty much ignored the um, the called for colors and decided to do my own thing I wanted to use stuff I already had on hand um, rather than trying to especially because this pattern calls for classic color works weeks dye works um, and some gentle art and when I started this it was very difficult to get all of those um, so I decided to use what was on hand so that again is be well mini bouquet by Jeanette Douglas so that one won't take much to finish I just haven't I've decided to just keep starting things instead of necessarily worrying about finishing things depending on what my mood is but I'm also mostly starting small things like this that, that are easily finished um, let's see my third start oh I said I had five starts didn't I I fibbed <laughs> I only have four starts I don't know <laughs> I may have to change my Instagram because I think I even put it on Instagram that I had five starts I don't know how to count apparently um, yeah <laughs> we'll see how it goes anyway um, so my third start here um, this I'm going to talk about more in detail in a minute but for mania my third start is Stiach alone 2020 so we'll talk more about this in a minute so this is um, this is the majority of the first pattern for Stiach alone 2020 and we'll come back to that oh wow we're almost at 40 minutes and I haven't even gotten to stash flash we might have to do a separate stash flash video <laughs> um let's see start number four start number four which i thought was start number five um so i apologize i fibbed i only have four starts so far um this is do small things with great love and this is a piece by uh this is a design by lizzie kate let me see if i can hold this up a little bit better for you I want to fold it quite in half so this is a piece of linen that uh, came out of a grab bag from mystic hand dyed um, and I am NOT loving this linen probably if I had put this in a hoop instead of stitching it in hand I'd be happier with it um, I also found even though I did a floss toss and if you follow me on Instagram you can see the floss toss that I did with this the colors looked fantastic when I laid the skeins across the fabric but as I'm stitching them um, especially this pelican gray this is a week's dye work pelican gray um, that is it's not as clearly defined as I had thought it would be um, none of the colors are popping quite as much as I would have expected um, this red I don't know why I didn't bring this closer to you sooner um, this red in the love and the heart that's called romance it's also these are all weeks dye works um, romance is gorgeous and that one pops pretty well but the other colors not popping as well as I would like so um, I'm not as happy with this as I want to be just because nothing is showing up as well as I would like and this fabric has been um, kind of a bear to work with and like I said this is a linen so it wants to roll it wants to flop it wants to do all this stuff and if I had put it in a hoop um, I would probably be significantly happier with it I am still enjoying the pattern um, and this one is actually very close to done so I need to finish the E in love and then there is um, there is a border of design at the bottom but then that one will be finished so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this one it's so hard to read from far away I mean you can read it up close but it's difficult to read from far away so I'm not sure I'm not sure ultimately what will happen with this we'll see 
Um, but I do love this piece. I might end up stitching it on an even weave or Lugana or something um, that might make, it, might make it more satisfying for me. So we'll see. So that is start number four. So I only have four starts. I apologize for fibbing to you. I don't know what I thought my fifth start was. Some, for some reason I had five in my head instead of four. Um, but there will be, um, there will be more starts. I am expecting to start um, this pattern during May. So this will be a mania start. Um, this I'm actually gonna stitch. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a dark purple linen and um, stitch it with a gold silk um, floss from Hand Dyed by Rolanda. And this is because this is a fleur-de-lis type pattern that I plan on giving to some of our friends as a Christmas ornament. So um, we'll see if that works. It's 73 by 73 stitch design. Um, it may, it says that on 30 count this would be 5 by 5. So maybe if I do it on 32 count it will actually be more of an ornament size. 5 by 5 might be slightly large for an ornament. Um, but we'll see. Maybe I'll do this and it comes out whatever size and I'll finish it and then I'll do a separate thing for them for Christmas. Regardless, I plan on starting this in May. So that's going to be a new start. Um, I also just literally just got this pattern. Um, I had ordered some things from everything, um, everything crossstitch.com and um, unbeknownst to me, I had in my cart this pattern and the floss to go with it. And um, I was like, maybe I don't need that right now. I don't know when I added it to the cart. It's been like six months or something since I even shopped on that site. So <laughs> I was like, I don't know when I added that, but I decided it really didn't add that much cost to my cart. So I was like, sure, why not? And um, Mystic Hand Dyed is actually on her Facebook group. She's doing a Pride Month, um, a Pride Month contest words. Um, it's afternoon. You think my brain would be awake by now. Um, but she's doing a Pride Month contest. And so she needs submissions by, I think, June 6th or something. I finished piece by June 6th. Since this was in my cart, I was like, oh, it's Kismet. I'll just, because I don't have any other specific Pride um, patterns right now. Um, I have some ideas for some that I'm going to design, but the idea of getting it designed and actually stitched before June 6th is like, no, too many things going on right now. So I was like, well, this is pride. <laughs> so obviously I had wanted it at some point in my life anyway, so I was like, sure, why not? So I think this will also be a May start so that I can get it done by June 6th as well. This is actually only 63 by 63 high. Um, so it's slightly smaller than the Fleur de Lis and that's gonna be a much, um, probably a much quicker stitch just because it's straight edges all the way across. Um, I'm not sure if it's designed to stitch all the black or if it's only designed to stitch the colors. If it is designed, actually I just remembered I do have some, I have black and charcoal black linen that I can use for this. Fantastic! That's awesome! Okay. So <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, so I do have some black fabric that I can use for this, so I totally can start this. I've got the colors, got the pattern, got the black fabric, so that'll be a May start as well. Um, what I Another thing, and um, this actually technically goes into the haul section, but um, it's potentially a May start. So I told you a while ago about um, a cross stitch kit that I have been dying dying to have in my life. It finally arrived from the UK. I am so freaking excited and I really want to start this. So in my hot little hands, I have Medusa Dollmaker's Gamer Nouveau. Oh my gosh. Fantastic. Oh my gosh. And I didn't discover until after I ordered this that you can actually, so this is, it comes with a full paper pattern. So this is a massive book of the printed pattern. And um, you can purchase the kit this way. If you prefer, you can actually purchase the kit with a PDF pattern instead um, so that you can you save a little bit of money on the full kit if you don't get the paper pattern. Um, but if you choose, you can get the paper pattern with your kit and get a backup PDF with your kit also. Um, and that also works for ordering after the fact. So I already ordered the kit, but I ordered the add-on PDF and told them which kit I had ordered and they sent it to me later that day. So I have a PDF version of this as well, which is fantastic because as much as I love having the paper pattern, probably it's going to be a lot easier if I can put this in Pattern Keeper or some similar online thing. 
Um, so yeah, I have my I have my full kit. This kit comes with all of the floss, all of the floss, and you can see here it also comes with some Magic Grid 25 count Lugana. So I have everything I need to get started. I have the PDF, I have the, the paper pattern, I have all the floss, I have needles, I have fabric. All I have to do is figure out what kind of apparatus I'm gonna use for stitching. Um, and that's kind of where I've hit the brick wall because I just, I can't wrap my brain around it. <laughs> because this finished piece, the finished piece is 14, almost 15 inches by 21 and a quarter inches. So it's gonna be 21 inches long, it's gonna be almost 15 inches across. Now once you add the three inches on either side for um, finishing, that's gonna be a little, it's gonna be 21 inches across um, the full piece of fabric. And that's where I'm running into the issue because what I like to do is I like to have the entire surface of my work visible at one time. Now I'm okay putting this on a scroll so that I only see what I can only see maybe eight to 10 inches at a time, that's fine. But I need the entire width for whatever reason, I need I need as much as possible to not have to adjust the fabric. Scrolling the fabric is fine, but moving it on a Q-snap or a hoop makes me crazy. So, but to think about a frame that is at least wide enough to put 21 inches of fabric, that's gonna be a pretty big frame. And it's gonna have to live there for a long time. This is probably gonna take me years to finish. So that's where I am. I'm like, do I want to just go ahead and put it on an 11 by 11 Q snap and just move it as I need to because it's not going to move very quickly? Or do I really want it to live on a scroll frame for this long? And yeah, so um, that may sound like the silliest debate ever, but that's where I am with this. But I really want to get this started. Um, I think this is actually going to be my very first full coverage piece, even though I have I think three or four um, Heaven and Earth Designs patterns that I'm really excited about. But this, this I've been, since I got back into cross stitching, um, I saw this on some Reddit page somewhere three years ago, four years ago, when I first got back into cross stitching and I have been dying to have it ever since and it is in my hands now. So I need to get started. I want this to be a May start, so we'll see. So yeah, so that's it for Mania. So. Now that we're 47 minutes in, <laughs> yeah, yarn is not happening today, folks. Yarn will be, yarn will be in its own video. <laughs> I have other stuff to do. I have a cake I have to bake and like a Zoom to do it too. So <laughs> life is busy, y'all. <laughs> anyway, so let's talk about Stiach for a quick minute. So Stiach this year, um, I think they're still planning on doing the big Stiach um, at the end of the year, theoretically, depending on how the world goes and how, yeah, a lot of stuff is up in the air. We don't know how the rest of the year is going to go, but they wanted to do something to give folks something to do to build a community, to join in together, something to stitch together, um, just a little fun thing to have. So. What they have done is hopefully in addition to the regular Stiach that will happen later this year, they have created um, an event called Stiach Alone. So the entire purpose of this is that you're going to stitch this alone in your home. There's no group gatherings. There's no, um, um, there are uh, teams, but there are no team challenges. Any challenges will be things that you are required to do at your home without going out. Um, you will not be required to meet up with anybody. In fact, you are absolutely discouraged and pro forbidden from meeting w up with people to do things. So everything is intended to be on your own um, at home, but it's on your own at home together. So we're all doing it together. And this year's pattern or this, the pattern for Stiach alone is not a mystery this year. So, or it's not a mystery for this time. Normally it is a mystery. You get a piece by piece every week and you start to figure it out at some point. But this time we know exactly what it is. And this pattern is, um, this is the start of it, obviously. Um, but this pattern is very special to Matt and M because it was really kind of, it was the piece that launched them into what Stiach is today, as far as the business side of, of the whole shebang. So many years ago, 
what they did was they would design a pattern, they would make the piece, and then they would sell the finished pieces. Well, with this piece, they got their first request for patterns, for to sell the patterns of the pieces that they were making. And this sort of launched them into this pattern making team that they are today. So they still do finished pieces, but for the most part, their business comes from selling the patterns versus the finished pieces now. So. Um, and this piece, once finished, will say, bless this house with a picture of Hugh Laurie as house. <laughs> so it's super cute. Um, I love Hugh Laurie. I do love house. Um, probably I would have liked something a little snarkier, you know, a little more timely, but I get how important it is to them um, for the history of Stiach and all that sort of stuff. And so I think it's fantastic. And also it's not a pattern that was actually developed and readily available. So M actually had to um, to recreate this pattern in order to share it out for everybody. Um, and she's done a fantastic job of it. So this is going to be detailed similar uh, in a similar way to Golden Girls, but not as detailed and finicky as Golden Girls, thank goodness. Um, and overall, the pattern is simpler anyway. There's there's going to be a border. Uh, the reason I haven't started stitching it is because I haven't decided exactly what kind of border I want. Um, a teammate of mine uh, came up with a fantastic border that I love that I may use. It's much more intricate intricate than the um, the border that was originally designed for this. Um, but I may go with some combination in between. We'll have to see. Um, but this was one of those things where you could use. A pattern that Emma had suggested or you could use your own not pattern a color palette that Emma had suggested or you could use your own um, I have sort of gone off the reservation altogether because this fabric here you may recognize this from other pieces that I've done this is um, the last piece of this color of hand dyed or ice dyed Aya that I made last year sometime so I used two other pieces of it um, for um, the by far not the worst stitches that I did, one for Will Wheaton and one for a test stitch, um, and I'm still developing that pattern. Um, <laughs> but um, but yeah, so this is the last, the final piece, um, or the final portion of that piece of Ada, and that's what I'm using. Um, and I love it because it's got, it's got so many different tones here. Let me see if I can move this. So we got a lot of different tones here. We've got blues and purples and reds and black and yellow and orange and um, just all kinds of craziness going on, which I think is awesome. Um, and I've picked these, um, I basically picked six intense blues in different shades. So it ranges from white all the way to a really dark blue, but they're, um, they're not the blues that M had picked out, which were much more in a navy range. Um, these are like bright, intense blues, which I love. Um, so I'm super, super excited. Um, and I love the fact that he looks kind of like Iceman right now. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that is Stiach. Um, I am team captain of a team. Like I said, we're not doing um, we're not doing team challenges this uh, for this particular thing, but we do still have teams, um, and we very much are individual team communities as well as a full Stiach community. Um, so if that's something you'd be interested in, certainly let me know. Um, our team, my team, is Sips and Stitches. Uh, where we don't total our tees <laughs> and um, you know there's some certainly some folks that you might know already in the group um, some of my friends uh, from here on YouTube and some of my friends from outside of YouTube as well um, some folks that I actually met through last year's Stiach um, on the team lots of really cool people we have about 20 members now we're certainly open to new members, so if that's something that you are interested in, uh, then send me an email or um, you know shoot me a shoot me a message here or something like that. I'll send you the link to the group. Um, I don't want a ton of members just because I don't want it to become unmanageable. But you know we are certainly open to meeting new people and having new folks join us on this little journey. So um, it's super fun. Um, so as I said, I'm team captain. This will be my second time captaining. Um, we have just about doubled our team at this point. I think we only had 10 or 12 members for last year's Stiach, and now we're up to an even 20, which is pretty exciting. We have some really cool new folks who've joined us, and um, you know, kind of our, our strategy at this point is just to get to know each other, to become more of a cohesive team so that hopefully when there are real challenges towards the end of the year, we will kick ass. So we finished, I think, 15th out of 
70 or 80 teams last year, uh, which I thought was fantastic because the kinds of teams we were competing against were 100 person teams from across the globe um, who could manage to get all kinds of craziness accomplished for some of these team competitions. We did the best we could with our 10 little members. Um, and to finish 15th out of so many people or out of so many teams with such a small team, I thought was pretty damn awesome. So we're we're excited to continue going and uh, you know excited to have new members if folks are interested so just let me know um, so that is Siach alone and with that we are almost at an hour so um, at the very least I'm going to pause here and possibly do um, my haul in another video um, or um, yeah, I'll probably do it in another video. So if I don't see you again, <laughs> or at least if I don't see you again in this video, then have a great day. I hope that you're doing well. I hope that you and your family are well and healthy. You're taking care of yourself. Um, and I hope that everything is going as okay as it can be. Um, I'm having a great day. I hope you're having a great day too. We'll see you soon. Bye.